In this video, we are going to explore more about meat processing, particular beef. What does a meat processing plant do? The meat packing industry handles the slaughtering, processing, packaging, and distribution of meat from animals such as cattle, pigs, sheep, and other livestock. Poultry is generally not included. This greater part of the entire meat industry is primarily focused on producing meat for human consumption, but it also yields a variety of byproducts including hides, dried blood, protein meals such as meat and bone meal, and, through the process of rendering, fats. Who are the big four meat processors? You may ask, the four major meat companies in the US are Casual, Tyson Foods, JBS, and National Beef Packing. Control 55% to 85% of the hog, cattle, and chicken markets. In the United States and some other countries, the facility where the meat packing is done is called a slaughterhouse, packing house or a meat packing plant. In New Zealand, where most of the products are exported, it is called a freezing works. An abattoir is a place where animals are slaughtered for food. The meat packing industry grew with the construction of the railroads and methods of refrigeration for meat preservation. Railroads made possible the transport of stock to central points for processing and the transport of products. Before the Civil War, the meat industry was localized, with nearby farmers providing beef and hogs for local butchers to serve the local market. Large army contracts during the war attracted entrepreneurs with a vision for building much larger markets. The 1865-1873 era provided five factors that nationalized the industry. The rapid growth of cities provided a lucrative new market for fresh meat. The emergence of large-scale ranching, the role of the railroads, refrigeration, and entrepreneurial skills. Cattle ranching on a large scale moved to the Great Plains, from Texas northward. Overland cattle drives moved large herds to the railheads in Kansas, where cattle cars brought live animals eastward. Abilene, Kansas, became the chief railhead, shipping 35,000 cattle a year, mostly to Kansas City, Milwaukee, and Chicago. In Milwaukee, Philip Armour, an ambitious entrepreneur from New York who made his fortune in army contracts during the war, partnered with Jacob Plankinton to build a highly efficient stockyard that serviced the upper Midwest. What industry is meat processing? The greater part of the meat industry is the meat packing industry, the segment that handles the slaughtering, processing, packaging, and distribution of animals such as poultry, cattle, pigs, sheep and other livestock. Chicago built the famous Union Stockyards in 1865 on 345 swampy acres to the south of downtown. Armour opened the Chicago plant, as did Nelson Morris, another wartime contractor. Cincinnati and Buffalo, both with good water and rail service, also opened stockyards. Perhaps the most energetic entrepreneur was Gustavus Franklin Swift, the Yankee who operated out of Boston and moved to Chicago in 1875, specializing in long-distance refrigerated meat shipments to eastern cities. A practical refrigerated, ice-cooled rail car was introduced in 1881. This made it possible to ship cattle and hog carcasses, which weighed only 40% as much as live animals. The entire national market, served by the railroads, was opened up, as well as transatlantic markets using refrigerated ships. Swift developed an integrated network of cattle procurement, slaughtering, meat packing, and shipping meat to market. Up to that time cattle were driven great distances to railroad shipping points, causing the cattle to lose considerable weight. Swift developed a large business, which grew in size with the entry of several competitors. The Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906 was the first of a series of legislation that led to the establishment of the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Another such act passed the same year was the Federal Meat Inspection Act. The new laws helped the large packers and hurt small operations that lacked economy of scale or quality controls. Why meat processing is important in the country. In addition, meat processing and its associated industries also provide employment, income, and stimulate the local, regional, or national economies. The meat industry may also be an important component of the export sector, generating not only valuable foreign exchange, but also savings through import substitution. Who is the largest beef producer? The United States. The United States is the country producing the most beef in the world by some margin. The country is expected to produce 12.6 million tons of beef and veal this year. Which animal is most important for meat industry? The meat derived from cattle is known as beef, meat derived from pigs is pork, and from chickens is poultry. Pork is the most widely eaten meat in the world, accounting for over 36% of the world meat intake. A meat slicer, also called a slicing machine, deli slicer or simply a slicer, is a tool used in butcher shops and delicatessens to slice meats, sausages, cheeses and other deli products. As compared to a simple knife, using a meat slicer requires less effort, as well as keeps the texture of food more intact. Generally, slicers can be adjusted easily to cut slices of variable thickness. Older models of meat slicer may be operated by crank, while newer ones generally use an electric motor. While the slicer is traditionally a commercial apparatus, domestic use versions are also marketed. 
A meat cutter prepares primal cuts into a variety of smaller cuts intended for sale in a retail environment. The duties of a meat cutter largely overlap those of the butcher, but butchers tend to specialize in pre-sale processing, reducing carcasses to primal cuts, whereas meat cutters further cut and process the primal cuts per individual customer request. The job title of butcher has been mostly replaced in corporate storefronts in the last two decades, after customer trends show that modern customers increasingly associated the term with animal slaughter and unsanitary conditions, regardless of the condition of the store. With the advent of off-premises pre-packaged supermarket meat, many supermarkets now avoid mention of either cutting or butchering, and simply call their meat cutters, meat department associates or similar. In the UK the term butcher is still used to describe a person who offers for retail sale meat ready for cooking by the customer. They will also prepare cuts, joints etc. for the customer. Most corporate retailers still use the term butcher for their meat department operatives. Most beef can be used as is by merely cutting into certain parts, such as roasts, short ribs or steak, while other cuts are processed. Trimmings, on the other hand, which are usually mixed with meat from older, leaner, therefore tougher cattle, are ground, minced or used in sausages. The blood is used in some varieties called blood sausage. Other parts that are eaten include other muscles and offal, such as the oxtal, liver, tongue, tried from the reticulum, particularly the pancreas and thymus, referred to as sweetbread, the heart, the brain, the kidneys, and the tender testicles of the bull, known in the United States as calf fries, prairie oysters, or rocky mountain oysters. Some intestines are cooked and eaten as is, but are more often cleaned and used as natural sausage casings. The bones are used for making beef stock. Meat from younger cows, calves, is called veal. Beef from stiz and hyphas is similar. Beef is first divided into primal cuts, large pieces of the animal initially separated by butchering. These are basic sections from which steaks and other subdivisions are cut. The term primal cut is quite different from prime cut, used to characterize cuts considered to be of higher quality. Since the animal's legs and neck muscles do the most work, they are the toughest, the meat becomes more tender as distance from hoof and horn increases. Different countries and cuisines have different cuts and names, and sometimes use the same name for a different cut. For example, the cut described as brisket in the United States is from a significantly different part of the carcass than British brisket. To improve tenderness of beef, it is often aged, i.e., stored refrigerated to allow endogenous proteolytic enzymes to weaken structural and myofibrillar proteins. Wet aging is accomplished using vacuum packaging to reduce spoilage and yield loss. Dry aging involves hanging primals, usually ribs or loins, in humidity-controlled coolers. Outer surfaces dry out and can support growth of molds and spoilage bacteria if too humid, resulting in trim and evaporative losses. Evaporation concentrates the remaining proteins and increases flavor intensity. The molds can contribute a nut-like flavor. After two to three days there are significant effects. The majority of the tenderizing effect occurs in the first ten days. Boxed beef, stored and distributed in vacuum packaging, is in effect wet age during distribution. Premium steakhouses dry age for 21 to 28 days or wet age up to 45 days for maximum effect on flavor and tenderness. Meat from less tender cuts or older cattle can be mechanically tenderized by forcing small sharp blades through the cuts to disrupt the proteins. Also, solutions of exogenous proteolytic enzymes, papain, bromelin or fissin, can be injected to augment the endogenous enzymes. Similarly, solutions of salt and sodium phosphates can be injected to soften and swell the myofibular proteins. This improves juiciness and tenderness. Salt can improve the flavor, but phosphate can contribute to soapy flavor.